Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Thanks for joining me today. So um, I recently learned how to make a plaid pattern on um, with Affinity Designer. I followed a really good um, tutorial on YouTube, but it was for Illustrator. So I um, so I'm going to make a video to show you how to do it in Affinity Designer, but also. I want to show you how to make a diagonal plaid with a weave pattern in it. Um, I didn't, I tried to, I recently designed something like that and it was really interesting. I'll link the Illustrator tutorials, the YouTube ones um, in the comments, um, but let's try and make some plaid. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to open up my, um, well, before I start, just to quickly say, I'm sorry if you hear some background noise, people walking around. I'm in a shared office space today and um, there's a lot of activity. Okay, so first things first, we want to uh, create a new document. So that's from file, um, new. I'm using uh, 12 by 12, 3600 by 3600 pixels, 300 DPI. I always create an artboard and I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, color RGB. Um, no margins, no bleed, and uh, don't bother with the scale. So I'm creating that. So reason for making a using an artboard is it like it's having a, it's like having a desk. So if I just um, make this shape here, just to show you what I mean. Um, if I have an artboard and I want to move things something off, I can still see it. So I can have a bunch of stuff over here that I can sort of have easily available. If I don't have an artboard, if I just delete that, you'll see when I take this off, it's still there, but I can't see it anymore. So that's the reason for the artboard. Okay, so to make the plaid, what we're gonna do is start off by just creating a series of rectangles. So using the rectangle tool, just um, just make a series of rectangles of various different sizes. If you have a color palette that you've already chosen, then go ahead and use that. I am going to use, uh, this is one that I made that I've called Opulence. I like that one a lot. Um, Oh, and make sure that you have set the stroke to zero. You don't want any stroke. Okay, right. So I'm pressing control, so click on the shape, press control and drag it across and that will, it's a quick shortcut for um, duplicating a shape or you could just hit control J as well. So try to stick to a maximum of four colors. Don't, um, or five, don't try and, don't do too much more than that. So then it just becomes too muddy and busy. And don't overthink it, like I am. <laughs> so now just make sure that this, um, is all all lines up with the with the artboard. Okay, so now we've got our shape. I'm going to just highlight all of that and group it. Control G, or you can do a uh, layer and group. <clears throat> so then, to make a just a, a, a normal plaid, highlight the group. I don't know why that's doing that. Okay. Control uh, J, duplicate it. Then we're going to rotate it through 90 degrees. You know, so it's it's taken it all the way up there. So that's that's because it's anchored at this point here. So if you anchor it at the center and then rotate it through 90 degrees, then you get that. 
Now you can see you can't see anything. So what you do is have a 50% um, opacity. So then you've got your check pattern, you've got your plaid pattern, brilliant. So you could leave it there, but we're gonna take it one step further and create a, um, a weave pattern. So, okay, so in the um, tutorial, the, um, the person doing the tutorial mentions, so you have to create a long, thin uh, line. I'm going to set this to 25 pixels. And you want to fill it with a color that you're not using in your design. And also set your stroke to transparent, so no stroke. Then you want to rotate by 45 degrees. So um, she mentions the blend tool. So basically you, um, in an illustrator, you can like have a start point and a finish point and then fill all the points in between. I don't think anything like that exists in Affinity Designer. So I think we're gonna have to do this manually. So what we do is, um, I start from this end. Make sure that you keep this line, even if you don't need it to be this long, it has to be this length. Um, and I'll show you you'll, for later when we come to align everything, it won't work if the lines are different lengths. So just zoom in a little bit, put it at one end. And then just to make sure that it repeats nicely, whatever we put on this side, we have to repeat on this side, um, separated by the distance of this square. So in my case, it's 3600 pixels. Duplicate it and then move it by the width of the square. So I'm going to add 3600 onto this. And then I like both of them. Duplicate those, and I'm going to shift that by fifty pixels, so minus ninety three fifty. So that is the width of the line, twice the width of the line. So you get the width of the line, the same width again, and then another line. And then I'm going to keep on doing that until the square is filled. I'm just hitting Control J and it's doing it for me. So that's fantastic. Right, when I'm getting, I'm just going to zoom in here. Okay, perfect. All right, now we have our grid. So now I need to, before we do anything else, Highlight your grid, but um, not including the horizontal stripe group. And then export that so that you don't have to keep doing this every single time. You save this, then you can, next time you want to do a plaid pattern with a weave effect, just bring this in, import this, and then you won't have to do you won't have to do this step again. So it's, it's a real time saver. So export, export, choose SVG, choose selection only. There will give you your lines. Now this, you save it as an SVG because you want it to be in a vector format in order to do the next step. Um, so then you can just export that and save it as whatever you want. Um, now, the, before we do the next step, we have to ungroup the horizontal stripe group just ungroup that. Now select everything again, and then go up here to your layer action and then click on divide. Then 
just highlight one of these lines, select, select same fill color. So that will uh, choose everything that is red. So that's why we chose a color that is not in our design. Delete that and you'll see that you're left with this pattern, this weave pattern. So then if you group the whole lot and then bring it over, we now have our plaid with a weave effect. Okay, now um, I set the opacity of the solid stripes to 50%. when I was, you know, right at the beginning of the video, but because you've kind of, um, you've created this cutout effect, you don't need to, you can keep the opacity at 100. If you were to um, change the opacity, you see the weave effect suddenly is not as prominent. So just, I remember that I did that. Okay, so now we've got our plaid pattern. Now to make the, um, I like no, to make the diagonal repeat, uh, let's create a new artboard. 3600 as well. So this one's going to be a square. We'll set it to 3600 by 3600, same as our thing, as our initial pattern. And then what I'm going to do is just to move that along a bit, take our Group. We're going to make a master group from the artboard. Okay. And I'm going to copy this and paste it onto artboard two. And then I'm going to rotate it through 45 degrees. And make sure that your aspect ratio is locked. I'm going to bring it down so that the everything falls within the artboard size. And now you just take a make a copy and then add it to four sides. So I'm going to put that one there. I've got things snapped, but because just make sure sometimes it tries to align with this artboard, it can be a bit of a pain. Just make sure that your center point is selected here. It's anchored in the center, and then you're going to be at zero 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 thirty six hundred. 36, sorry, 00, 3600, 0, 0, 3600, 3600, 3600. So just make sure that that's going on. But the snapping should work. Now, if we zoom in, we see that we have got a perfectly aligned, beautiful cloud weave effect. So now just export this artboard, file, export. Make sure you've got artboard two. We'll export that, we'll call it Diagonal Cloud 1. And if you just want to do a quick check to make sure that your pattern aligns beautifully, we will go to our Shape tool, Create a Shape, Circle, Square, whatever you want. Then go to the Fill tool, select Bitmap for the fill. Choose your diagonal plaid pattern. And then if you adjust these handles, you can see you've got a perfectly seamless repeat. It's a bit difficult to see. I can't zoom in close enough to see the whole repeat. But there you go. You've created a diagonal 
applied with a weave effect and it's a seamless repeat. So if you found the video useful, please do leave a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment as well if you'd like. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.